Happy Monday, guys. My name is Andre Jick. Welcome back. Hope you had a great weekend. And today we're going to be talking about renting versus buying a house. And is renting really throwing money away or is it just magically saving us money? That's dumb. I don't know why I'm producing euros. I live in Las Vegas. Now, full disclosure, I am a renter, which means we're gonna be taking a look at my very real situation using my very real numbers that I'm gonna be showing you out in the open for you to take a look at, at my three bedroom, three bathroom, 2000 square foot house here in Las Vegas. So watch all the way through to the end, because again, numbers don't lie and you can decide for yourself whether renting or buying is the better option for you. Let's begin. <laughs> So we're gonna be using the New York Times calculator, which is amazing. I'll leave a link for it in the description below this video where you guys can plug in your own numbers. But the first thing it wants to know is the home value. So to calculate the home value, I didn't just use one website. I used the average of the three popular ones. So realtor.com shows me a value of $284,600. Zillow shows me the lowest estimate with $267,114. And Redfin gives me $295,042 with the highest estimate and the odd $42 at the end. I'm not sure why it's that specific, but averaging out those three values, we get $282,252, which is exactly what we're gonna type into the calculator and move on. And the next question it asks is how long do we plan on staying here? And that's a hard one to predict, I have no idea, but I do know that I've been in this house for about four years. And you know what they say, a long-term renter is worth their weight in like buttons. So go ahead and let me know my self-worth and smash those like buttons. So we'll plug in four years for now because I'll admit it's a hard number to predict and it's one of the factors that's going to have a huge impact on our final result. So we're going to play around with that number a little bit later. But for now, the thing I do know is how long I've been here, which is four years. So that's what we'll use. So the next question is the mortgage details. And this is the most important part where I said you need to play the game that is the credit score. So go ahead and build your credit score or start to fix it because you need a score of 750 or more to get the national prime rate. 5% right now according to fedprimerate.com. So if you don't have that, go ahead and start today because you're gonna be way overpaying for your house. And for the other two, we'll use a 20% down payment with a 30 year mortgage. The next question it asks is what does the future hold? And if I knew the answer to that question, I would've bought Bitcoin at a dollar, you know what I'm saying? So for now, we're gonna use historical numbers to plug this in and to determine the home price growth rate, we can also use Zillow. And for my area in Las Vegas, it's showing me a home price growth rate of 3.3% with a forecast for one year at negative 0.6%. I don't know how accurate that is, but I am going to use 3.3% because that does sound fair and that's what I've plugged into the calculator. Then it asks for rent growth rate. Now my rent for the last four years has not increased one bit until just recently it increased $200, which is pretty substantial, but when averaged out over four years, that's only 4.2% growth rate, which is what we're going to plug into the calculator. But just so you know, if you're a reliable renter who always pays on time, who doesn't bug the landlord, they will not increase your rent unless what you are paying and what the market rate is, is substantially different, like $200 or more, because a good landlord is not going to want to sacrifice and potentially risk losing a really reliable long-term renter. Next up is investment return rate. This is something we can argue about for days, but let's just assume that the stock market has returned on average 7%, which I would say is not even that fair because in the last five years, we've had a 10% return rate and in the last 10 years, a 13.3% return rate for the S&P 500. But I will say that it could be argued we've been on a bull market, so that's not fair to use as a benchmark either. Now, I don't invest in the S&P 500. You guys know me primarily as a dividend investor and my returns have been just slightly lower, but not by much, so I'll use a number that I can prove. So if we navigate over to Simply Safe Dividends, in the last 10 years, you can see my returns are 6.2% in the last 10 years, but that's only the dividend growth rate. That doesn't count the capital appreciation as the stock also grows in value. So I'll just be really fair to myself, or rather unfair, and I'll say 7% 
for the investment return rate, when I think the real number should be closer to eight or 9%. And next up is the inflation rate, which we can just leave alone at the default. Next category on the calculator is of course, everyone's favorite, NAT. That is the taxes. So let's change the default property tax rate on the calculator, which is 1.35%. And let's change it down to 1%, which I think is more in line with the national average. It favors the buyer. And I think it's closer to what Las Vegas, Las Vegas people, Las, Las Vegans? We're vegans now? Las Vegan, I like that. Next up is the marginal tax rate, which of course is the rate under which you pay your taxes. And as my first year as a full-time YouTuber, I will say I will probably fall under the 22% income tax bracket, which if we look up, we can see all the different incomes and all the different tax brackets they fall under for the year of 2019. I don't know how much money I'm gonna make for the year of 2019, but I can confidently say, I don't think it's gonna be more than $84,200, not for this year. But if I luck, maybe next year, yes, Gypsy? So looking at the next category, closing costs will have a huge effect on the final result. But I do think that the calculator default for selling and buying is a little high. So let's change it from 6% down to 3% for buying as well as selling. The national average is between 2% to 5%, but that varies depending on the location and the realtor that you get. But by lowering this to 3%, I think I'm being more than fair. And in fact, I'm favoring the buying scenario. So we'll use 3% for this. Maintenance and renovation is one of the biggest points of contention we could probably argue about for a while, but I'm gonna be fair and use a historical average between one to 2% of the entire home purchase price budgeted for every single year. Of course, that depends on how old the property is, and my house was built in 1995, so it's almost 25 years old, which means repairs are gonna get expensive, and repairs and maintenance are one of the biggest expenses and hidden costs of home ownership that people really forget about. Not to mention that when you own a house, you are going to wanna spend money upgrading it. I know myself well enough by now to know that I would spend so much money upgrading the kitchen, getting nicer appliances, doing the backsplash, doing the hardwood flooring, redoing the carpets, repainting everything, getting a home automation system installed, getting security systems installed, doing my backyard, making it way nicer for those pool parties. Just so many things that I don't have to worry about as a renter because why would I upgrade a place that's never gonna be mine? So I'll use 1.5% for the $282,000, which is $4,230 per year. And if you're saying to yourself, well, that's way too much. I haven't paid that much in years. And that's true, but that's because because maintenance and repairs don't come in averages. They all come in just one chunk, right? I'll give you an example. My dad, who lives in the same community in the exact same house, his AC went out, so he went out and got a new one installed. That cost him $8,000. And maybe he could have gone out and gone bargain shopping and maybe got a better price, but you try living in the hot 120 degree desert in Las Vegas and see how long you last before you go out and buy the first thing you see. So like I said, repairs are extremely expensive, but I do think that 1.5% is a fair yearly average. And next up is homeowner's insurance. My dad pays for this exact same house about $100 a month, which is on the higher end. And the closest I can get here is 0.42%, which is $1,184 close enough, but honestly, you could probably make this lower for you. It's just not gonna affect the final result that much. And then for the next category, which is monthly utilities, this calculator assumes that your landlord is gonna pay for utilities. And I guess it's true if you live in a mid-rise or maybe a high-rise somewhere or an apartment building, that might be true. But for the house, I'm putting zero because my landlord does not pay my utilities. But if you're curious to know how much I pay for utilities, I'll tell you that I pay $30.54 on average from Southwest Gas and from NV Energy, which is my electric bill, I pay $112.98 on average. So altogether, that is $143.52 per month. I have averaged the last 12 months of both of those bills to get that number. So it's highly accurate. And I don't pay for water because my HOA covers that. And speaking of HOA, monthly common fees is exactly that. And that's covering for things like the community pool, if you have security, if you have a gate, if you have trash service. And I have lived in places in Vegas where I know the landlord has eaten the HOA costs. And in this case, what I'm renting
renting right now, I know he's passing the cost down to me because my dad's HOA is about $240. And according to Zillow, it's actually $200 for the place that I'm renting right now. And I know that I'm paying it through my rent. So I'm also gonna say be very careful in buying a house if it has an HOA, because at least in Vegas's case, our HOAs are terribly mismanaged and they also go up every single year. And I'm gonna be very fair and just say for me, since it's being passed down to me, I'm gonna say $0 for the monthly common fees your case might be different. And for the last part, additional renting costs, we can put two months for security deposit and first month's rent. We have 0% for a broker's fee and we can also have zero for renter's insurance. I don't have renter's insurance, but I know you can find it for as low as $10 a month but I don't think it's a necessity. I'm not gonna change the number that much. So now for the fun part, let's make sense of all of this. I used to pay $1,200 for my rent for this place for the first four years, which is a three bedroom, three bathroom, 2000 square foot house here in Vegas. If you're from California, just please stay there. Now only this last year has my rent gone up to $1,400. But before then, if we look at the calculator at year three, it says that if I was renting the same place for 1,356, or lower, which I was, it would be better to rent, which I was. But at the four year mark, we can see that it says $1,237 or less to rent, which was no longer the case because now I'm paying $1,400. So about the four year mark is when it would have made much more sense to have bought this place in retrospect. However, this still doesn't paint the whole picture because buying a house is much more than a financial numbers game. I made a video lightly poking fun at home ownership and people got so upset and they've even made up their mind long before they finished the video and partly because it's my fault for the delivery, but overall it's a good message and you should watch the video all the way through to really get the point of it. But let me give you an example of what I mean. Four years ago when I moved inside this house, this giant 2000 square foot house, I had nobody, I had no furniture. I lived here with no furniture for over a year. I was depressed, I was going through a breakup. I was considering leaving my career of eight years because I was tired of it. I wanted to try something new. And I imagined that having a mortgage to balance in front of all of that uncertainty would have just been so, so stressful. And I was just terrified of not only losing the house, but losing whatever reputation I felt like I needed to uphold. I know it's silly, but maybe you guys can relate. We're all afraid of that. And also destroying my credit history for the next seven years. So I wanted to keep my options open that maybe I could get hired out of state. And so I wouldn't have to just live in Vegas in case I could find a job where I enjoy doing a lot more somewhere else keep my options open. But you know, buying this house, I think would have never allowed me to leave the job that I knew I needed to leave. And without that courage, I wouldn't be here in front of the five of you still left watching this video. So things are a lot better for me now as I have some sense of direction, growing my YouTube channel, trying to make that my full time, which I think I have. And so thank you guys. I'm trying to give as much value back as I can. And in the meantime, I am starting to slowly look for a place to buy. But like I said, for now, I'm okay. And I'm super glad to pay a small little premium to be a renter as I look for a place. But I don't think I'll be moving away from Vegas anytime soon to work some nine to five job somewhere else. I don't think I could do that again, but having a clear roadmap in life definitely helps. So if you're wondering which option is the best for you, whether you want to rent or buy your own place, then I'm going to leave a link in the description below the best calculator I have found to calculate all of this. And that is the New York Times calculator that takes all of these amazing different factors into consideration, which I think no other calculator does. But before you use it, please be honest with yourself about the maintenance and the upgrades like I was with me. And also, if you're not an investor who doesn't invest his money or her money, then please don't take, you know, the cost of opportunity and don't plug that in. You can't take advantage of that. So on average, I would say that it takes about roughly five years of renting before buying would have been the better, smarter decision. So if you have five years of confidence, five years of stability, then I would say, go ahead and buy that place. Just make sure you don't inflate and buy a place that's twice what you can afford because it's your forever home and you should be good to go. That's it, guys. Love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you all very soon as I go out and hang out with some finance YouTubers. Hope they're nice. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.